Right, so some time ago I posted a photograph of this and this is just really going to be a sort of quick overlook at this motor. It's not going to be particularly in depth. I had hoped to put it on a quad and test fly it but the, the weather has been awful. Um, at the weekend the winds were 45 miles an hour on the only day it was fine and, and the usual rain is putting paid to everything else. But these are the Ocean Power SMU X, which are in a very sort of unusual size or what is becoming less unusual. And these are 2306.5. And that seems to be a trend that's occurring across the market. The the last Ocean Power motors I reviewed were 2207.5s. T motor tends to do sort of odd sizing as well and in terms of where this fits in terms of the Ocean Power lineup you've got the GTS 2 um, which is in 2305 and 2306 and you've got the GTS 2 which comes in 2207 and then you've got very big um, sort of X-Class motors from them and the 2306.5 basically is marginally bigger than a 2207 and somewhat smaller than a 228. So why they didn't just make a 2207, I have no idea. Um, but it's 23 and a half, 23 or 6.5. And historically 23 or 6 motors were my preferred option. Having said that, I can't think recently that I've reviewed or purchased any 23 or 6s. I've just naturally um, used 2207s absolutely fine. And the differences between the two are marginal 23 or 6s tend to have a sort of a little bit more feel at the bottom end but fade at the top 22 or 7s tend to have a much more uh, aggressive linear throttle which doesn't fade at the top end but the differences are fractions of a fraction uh, and in the air and a blind test i bet you couldn't even tell the difference so the reason why i got this one having said all that is because it comes in this rather beautiful orange and orange is my favourite colour, which seems like an odd choice to review a motor on. <clears throat> but throughout my entire time in this hobby, there haven't been very many orange motors. Uh, Pyro Flip, I wish they had the orange and blue, but I've sort of wanted an orange motor for a long, long time. And because I can't get this guy in a quad and give you some honest feedback on it, I thought we'd do this video in a slightly different way because the majority of my quads run RC and power motors and I could get T-Motor F60 V4s just as easy as I can get these free from Banggood and they will obviously be cracking motors and the reason why I buy and review RC and power motors is for two reasons really <clears throat> initially it was out of curiosity and since then, it's been because I've had zero issues with them on all of my quads. So if we take a quick look in history through, these were my original Oisean Power Motors, the first ones that I reviewed. And these were 23 or 6. And I wasn't sure they would be a good fit for a 6 inch 6S build, but they've proven to be absolutely fantastic. And if you look at the bell on this one it's got a massive gouge out of it here but it still runs smooth and that's the same for all of these all of these motors they run really really smooth and this quad has been absolutely thrashed and bashed because it's the one that I did most of my early tree diving on simply because it's felt so planted in the air more recently we had my GEP RC Mark IV and again I used RC in power motors so the grey 2207.5 on the back and because I'd never seen them or reviewed them the pink 2207.5 on the front and I bought these ones simply because they're relatively sort of mid-range you can usually get them for sort of 15 or 16 quid with the usual discounts that Banggood puts out and they've been ultra reliable and I'm also running them on 
the prototype frame that I've been giving design input on um, and that one's got the two sevens on as well and the reason why they're on so many of my quads is if I look back I'm having a bit of a tidy up at the moment at the malters that I've killed recently or should I say in the last year as somebody who flies predominantly in woodland and grass I don't tend to sort of kill a lot of malters but Bearing in mind I'm running RCing power on the majority of my quads, I haven't got any broken RCing power. So I've got a Brother Hobby 2207. That didn't have much life before it burnt out. I've got a Zing, which I broke uh, the first time I flew these, actually. There's a dent in this bell, so I must have been really unlucky. And it basically froze. And more recently, two of these guys which were the 3b hobby 2207 pro 2s which really broke my heart actually because i loved these motors in the air and i loved the way they looked but on both of them basically the windings smoked and that was game over for those so although i've got in fact yes although i bought a spare one at the time i initially reviewed them I haven't since even bothered putting them on my quad because it was too much hassle and both of these smoked in pretty unusual circumstances that I couldn't really attribute to anything that I'd sort of done myself they were just random incidents so given the number of flight hours that the RCN power motors have seen and the fact that they're all still running and I haven't lost a single one it's either my lucky brand or they make a terrifically strong motor and I suspect the latter so I'm not going to take this this guy apart he says as he gets a screw stuck in it I'm not going to take this guy apart because Oisium power motors are really difficult to get the bell off you basically just need to heat it up and I don't want to scratch and damage um, a beautiful brand new motor as I've done in the past before trying to get them off so the build of this motor is exactly the same as all the others in fact by its size i would say it's probably for all intents and purposes by the logo the same motor it has the same or pretty much the same pattern in terms of the bell the underneath looks pretty much the same as well we've got nice chunky single strand windings and as always with RCN Power, this lovely one-piece bell, which I think is probably down to, uh, one of the reasons why they last so long, because it's just basically stronger. And obviously Zing and various other motors have taken up this sort of manufacturing, but RCN Power were the original guys. And as a motor, I just think it's really, really beautiful. I wish it didn't have this big logo on the side of it, having said that. So you're probably wondering why instead of talking performance and all the rest of it i'm talking about looks and, and the bottom line is is because m the majority of motors these days are really really good you'd have to go a long way to find a particularly bad motor um i can't really recall any recent motors in the sort of 13 quid upwards which i would consider to be bad they're all pretty smooth they're all you know but relatively reliable the majority have nice chunky bearings like these guys do so you've got to make your choice on the way they look or the hype of your favorite pilot flying them as t to do or the wacky colors that the zings put out and personally i like the understated beauty of or see in power and i have since i put them on that um, catalyst machine work six inch all those many months ago probably all, well over a year ago so this is the rc in power smoo x 2306.5 and this is going to go on one of my quads but given they're all colour matched at the moment I don't know which one I was going to put it on my plan was to do one last build 
with the Apex, um, an analog build, basically the last one that I'm probably ever going to do on 5 inch, but I don't know. Um, so I need to find a home for these guys, I could just stick them on the, um, the Osiris's, but I don't know. So either way, I'll get them in the air at some point in the not too distant future. And then we can talk a little bit more about how they compare to the, the GTS 2, 2 2 or 7.5s and all the rest of it. But from my angle, I don't really care <clears throat> about anything to do with titanium or 7 or 7.5 or any of that guff, all of which this guy more than likely possesses. What I care about is how long it lasts and if it feels good in the air. And the RC and Power Mortis have always given me what I've been looking for, which is a relatively smooth throttle field feel and decent power. And if you're a weight snob, this is with all of its wire. It comes with relatively short wires in fairness, but the wires are from the base of the bell. 15 centimeters long so for 15 centimeters of a wire the weight is 35.82 and remember this is a very big motor so if we compare it to this guy with shorter wire that's a little bit heavier this is a 23 or 6, so it should be a lot, lot lighter than it is. But the weight is pretty much average, there or thereabouts. But, as I said, the days of me giving a monkey's about an extra gram of weight on a freestyle quad are well behind me. That's not really where I'm at right now. So, that is that. In terms of other reviews, I'm going to wind down the reviews for a bit, because... I've had enough of them, if I'm honest. Um, I've got the Taycan to review. I'm going to add some FPV and play around with the buggy I got. Um, but that's pretty much it for the foreseeable future. And I need to do the setup guide for the um, Osiris build that I did. But I need to sort of back off and spend less time um, sort of endlessly reviewing Chinese crap and the stuff that they always want me to review and more time enjoying the setups that I've fallen in love with, which for me right now are the two Osiris's from Halo RC with the KISS setup. And strangely, this little guy, which is the Transtech Beetle. And if you wonder why it's got different ducks than the one it came with, it's because I couldn't find the third duct, I've lost it somewhere. So I had, I had these kicking around, which I got for three or four quid from Banggood, and they've survived really, really well. So that is a bit of an ongoing project. Love the way it flies at the moment. Now I've really reduced down the filters and um, got RPM filters working on it, but I'm suffering from this sort of endless prop wash on descent, which is really sort of killing um, a lot of the fun of it because it in the other 99% of circumstances it just feels really really good for freestyle and for sort of poking around in small spaces so that's an ongoing project and I'll obviously do an update if I manage to crack it and I've got a little 20 by 20 flight one board which I might pop in here and also when I get my hands on the Cadex Vista I'll basically remove this guy remove this heavy mid plate from it and I should be able to save you know 20 or 30 grams or so which should help a lot with its performance but yeah really enjoying this guy and I was planning to do a build around the iFlight Bumblebee but I don't think I am now I think I'm just going to review the frame and then I've said I'll give it to one of my mates because I don't need two cine whoops but that leaves me with a set of T-Mortar 15 or 7, 3,800 kV to review and fly. So 
given they're a relatively smooth motor, um, which will probably sacrifice a little bit of power for really smooth running, I may do a three inch build around the DGI system, which everybody is probably sick of me talking about right now, but it's really, um, really excited me. So I need to do something with these guys. But yeah, other than that, I'm reviewing nothing else for the foreseeable future. I haven't ordered anything more. I don't want to order anything more. I just want to spend some time tinkering and enjoying what I've got, which is the whole point of these videos. So that's it from me. Hope all is well in the world. And be careful of angry live streams. Cheers, guys. Thanks. Bye-bye.